Welcome to Venture Forward. It's early February 2023, and this is part four of the Revel Adventure to Get the Landy. If you missed the previous three episodes, I'm traveling in our Winnebago Revel from our new home in Arizona up into Nevada and then back into Utah to pick up my 1991 Land Rover Defender 110 high cap. Last year, in April of 2022, I left my old Defender in the care of a friend. I had a family emergency, and Shannon and I had to travel east on very short notice, and I haven't had the chance to circle back to get it until right now. So the past few weeks have been an adventure. I've taken the van into the backcountry. Despite having owned the Revel for over two years now, I became better acquainted with its capability and the capability of the agile off-road suspension. I stayed at some amazing backcountry campsites and I saw a lot of beautiful places. At the end of last week I made it to Kevin and Sarah's house and in their backyard was my Defender. Temperatures were in the single digits, it was covered in snow, and Kevin was kind enough to start it up on occasion and get the juices flowing and he also had it connected to a solar panel to keep a little bit of juice in the battery. greatest to help it could really stand a good cleaning you know because it's you know it's just been struggling this cold but you know put this fourth D solar controller on there and red arc seemed to keep it topped off so i can start about once every two or three weeks so cool it's been doing good thank you There was at least a foot of snow in kevin's backyard when we went to extract the truck but since it was so cold out it was mostly powdery except for a thin crusty layer. We thought for sure that we'd need to pull it out with another vehicle, such as Kevin's Forerunner Silver. But I got it started, put it in four low, and it just crawled right through the snow effortlessly despite the bald front tires. <laughs> having the most gorgeous lawn ornament this side of the pond but I know Chris is gonna have a lot more fun with it so one last drive oh yeah that thing's a snow plow and diesel is just so sexy I love it so much There's some ice. The only part where the Defender had any trouble was the pile of snow at the edge of Kevin's driveway. We scooped some snow away, put down the max tracks, and then it was able to crawl right out. It was back on pavement and ready to be hooked up to the van. This is how we check the oil. <laughs> <laughs> All set, we have the Land Rover in the driveway, all ready to be rolled onto the trailer tomorrow. It's hooked up to the battery charger. At first, I was planning on flat towing the Defender back to Arizona. The towing capacity of the 2020 Sprinter 2500 is 5,000 pounds, and the Defender is about 4,200 pounds. So flat towing it would keep things light. I picked up a tow bar and Kevin and I looked at it. We considered how it might attach. We considered wear and tear on the truck, the four wheel drive system, the tires. And well, we mutually decided against it. We decided it would be safer 
and better for the vehicle to put it on a U-Haul trailer. <laughs> One clean Land Rover, if not a little bit rusty. My route from Utah back to Arizona was pretty much the same as my drive north, except this time I've been sticking to pavement, just home in a straight shot, and no off-highway adventures. So that's basically down through St. George, Utah, into Las Vegas, Nevada, and then back into western Arizona. That's low country with comfortable temperatures, a lot of public land, and a lot of safe places to pull off and spend the night. The U-Haul trailer has a speed limit of 55 miles per hour posted on its fender, and I've been strictly adhering to that. And instead of heading into the backcountry to camp, I've been keeping it really simple. Last night I spent the night at a rest area in Utah. Tonight I might spend the night in a Cracker Barrel parking lot. It's not my favorite type of boondocking arrangement at all, but I don't want to mess around with that trailer in the backcountry. It doesn't have much ground clearance and the tires are kind of lame. This one's a little low, 45. I'm gonna top that off. You're probably asking, what are my plans with this Land Rover Defender? Well, for overland travel, we already have my tried and true and very capable Jeep Wrangler Rukon with the Ursa Minor Camper. And of course, we have the Winnebago Revel, which is a wonderfully comfortable overland vehicle. So what I want to do with the Defender isn't very overlandy at all. I want it to be an around town truck and a light duty trail rig. I want to keep its rustic outward appearance and its dents and its patina, but I want to fix it up over time, I want it to be solid, and I want the cab to be clean and comfortable. And as I'm able, I do want to add off-road modifications like a winch and locking differentials. I think whomever lived here before had a garage band or something because there's these colored lights in the ceiling. There was a black light over there. And we have a bunch of miscellaneous items that came with the house that we need to sort through and donate. So the garage is a little bit cluttered at the moment. But the truck fits in here pretty nicely. The front is up against the garage door and there's about four or five feet behind. The GoPro does make this space look a lot larger than it actually is but it is decently wide for a one-car garage. Aside from getting the truck registered, top priority is probably the front tires. There must be some front end issue or something because they are bald and they got eaten up very quickly. Although it's a little short on power, which might be a turbo issue, it otherwise runs pretty well, so tinkering under hood is gonna happen, but it's not a priority. The interior of the cab, however, is in really bad shape, and I think I need to gut the entire cab. I want to replace the torn seats. A lot of the fasteners are missing in the dashboard, so the whole dashboard is loose. The driver's side door only latches correctly when you slam it, 
but every time you slam it, the interior panel of the door self-destructs a little bit more. I took that plastic door panel off at one point before, and almost all of the plastic clips and the fasteners on the other side were missing or broken. It looks like someone had shoddily repaired it a long time ago and it was just finally giving up. The only thing is, and this is an aesthetic, is I don't want to replace the doors and lose the great worn graphics and the patina on the side of the truck. I don't know if this is possible, but it would be great to have brand new doors but with the old door skins on the exterior. I'm really just daydreaming about what could be and what I'd like to happen. These repairs aren't something that's going to happen quickly, it's probably stuff that I'm going to pick away at over time, but I do want to work on the truck in such a manner that I can use it from time to time. Maybe make incremental improvements instead of reducing it to a pile of parts that might take years to put back together. And thus concludes the four-part series of the Revel Adventure to get the Landy. While the end goal was to retrieve that knackered old truck, the real MVP of the story was the Winnebago Revel. While we've owned the van for over two years now, these past few weeks were some of the most rigorous experiences that I've ever subjected it to. It did great, it's extremely comfortable, it's surprisingly capable, and it's not a bad tow rig either. If you're interested in retracing my steps, my detailed GPS data is available to Patreon subscribers, and it's also available to members of Venture4WD.com. As always, thanks for riding along with me, and I'll see you next week.